Okay, guys. I thought I'd uh, start my YouTube uh, build on this thing uh, by introducing myself and show you where we got to today because obviously it's just been painted. So it's uh, so we've been through half the work already, but never too late, I guess. So my name's Heath, and uh, this is my 1969 HC Minara. Um, nuts and bolt resto. Come over here. The heart of it that I um, four twenty one Chev putting out six hundred horsepower. Um, it's been run up on the dyno and everything, but never been in a car before. It's all brand new, although it's a couple of years it's sort of sat there. But I'll just run you around the build and show you what the plans are and what we've done. Um, starting in the engine bay. We've smoothed the guards down and um, uh, smooth the firewall a bit. And a wiper relocation kit to go in there. Remove the um, heater heater box. Smooth the inner guards along here as well. Smooth the radiator support panel. Have this modified and I'll get that powder coated probably. Um, Rebuilt the front end, put Wilwood's disc brakes in there. Uh, four piston calipers, 280 mil. Uh, a Woolwood's mass cylinder uh, and a hidden brake booster so half of it's been plumbed up already um, brake booster goes under the under this guard just here and uh, at the back there you can see just down there a little connection that's for the um that's for the uh vacuum hose to connect to the back of the car because i don't want any um cables or wiring or anything in the engine bay not that you can see so that's all going to be neat um batteries in the boot obviously so we'll just have a bit of a walk around still going to put the um gauges on it sorry the badges on it um got the uh uh, combo Pros, sent on Combo Pros. Uh, same for the back, it's in the, uh, I need to get a new diff, we're getting a forward nine inch uh, shortened. So it's got um, uh, three and three eighth inch back space, so the big offsets. They're not tubbed or anything like that. So the paint will come out really good, really stoked for that. Bare metal, back to bare metal. So this is the vacuum hose for the um, for the for the uh, for the brakes for the brake booster. Got a Tremec five speed in there. Had to modify the tunnel. Transmission tunnel had to be cut out back to here and then uh, regrafted in so you can fit the, the Tremec in there. Slide across. See my uh, under the dash there. Me, um, all the hidden wiring and everything. They'll be all in there. It's a wiring harness by Painless, so I've got to rewire it, obviously.
and uh, that wiring goes under the under the guard to the front. The next job I've got is to um, put sound ending in there. A two inch um, reverse cow scoop. Bonnet scoop. So this is the battery tray for the boot. These are all the nuts and bolts, they've all been re-cap-plated. All, um, all redone, so they'll all come up with anything else. Every single nut and bolt has been cap-plated. Bolt. I've had redone, these are a whole heap of spare ones that I had, had re, re cat plated but um, got them all done, pretty cheap really, it was like 200 bucks or something for some, um, some guy to, some business to do it all, all of these have all been re, re plated, so uh, there we go. Nice and neat. Got this uh, Davies Craig uh, water pump thermostat sort of controller. Kicks your um, your uh, water pump in and out, your electric water pump. It'll kick that in and out, and it'll also uh, and it pulses because you don't have a thermostat anymore. So that just pulses on and off when you first start the car until the, until the temperature comes up and the radiator in the motor and then uh, and then it'll just run the, the water pump full time um, and then it also controls your um, twin thermo fan so I've got these um, SPAL thermo fans fitted to my um, custom race radi race radiators radiator this was an engine stand with the ignition and the gauges up here you can see the gauges along there um, so I just used to fire up that engine from time to time and annoy the neighbours. So that'll, that'll control the, uh, the um, thermostat. Sorry, not the thermostat, the thermo fans. So it could be a kit. Um, tank resealing kit, so I've got to get around to resealing the tank. That's the painless wiring, wiring harness that we had. Some of the fuel, fuel log and all that sort of stuff. Um, with all, all the all these bits come with the kit, um, filter and all sorts of stuff in there. This here is the um, Aeromotive um, kit for uh, the fuel pump. Um, so that gets retrofitted to your fuel tank. So you, and it, it gets, you can adjust the height of it. So it's a submersible fuel pump. Runs a bit cooler and um, also um, uh, not as noisy as well. So uh, this is all the sound in there. You get that, um, got the car builder stuff. So that'll be the next job actually. Next episode will be me installing the sound in there. Uh, I've had the, um, all the gauges and sorry, the dash and everything re redone. This all brand new. Little Smith retrofitting the uh, um, automated Procom gauges to it, so the the um, Speedo, the um, Taco, and then I got I think you know whatever it is, fuel and water here, 
temperatures and then the, then the other ones get mounted in here. So I'd put them in there, get rid of where the stereo would be. I'd probably hide the stereo somewhere. Just have one of those hidden ones that you got a little remote control for it or something like that. Um, brand new hood lining to go in. Your headlights obviously, gauges, that sort of stuff. Um, the headers down here, they were custom made headers. Um, so they've been um, ceramic coated, so they'll have to go back in. New steering box and all that, that's not, that the one that's in there is not the steering box that we're using. Um, got new up here, brand new bumpers. How are you doing? Got to um, fit them. And obviously all the parts, windows, but I've got to check all the um, uh, all the chrome work on those windows, see if they need re or not. I'm not sure if they need re -chroming. But I've had all the stainless polished, uh, all the stainless trims for the car, so I'm not putting any around the, the wheel arches, I'm just putting um, just putting the one across the front of the bonnet. We've got the whole lettering to go there, uh, and then just badges on the side and the rear. Um, and I'm not putting any other uh, stainless on it. Uh, but I have them all polished and I'm not really happy with it. You pay about 1400 bucks for some clown to do it for you and you could have done a better job yourself so I'm just going to buy a, a bloody buffing wheel and, uh, and do it myself. I'll go over it because he hasn't done a really good job. He's disappointed actually. I've just done it there's all the bloody stainless steel. It's all been polished and whatever although like I said the other day I wasn't real happy with it. I need to go over there and um, go over it all again. Got new carpet in the for, for it already, that's in the spare room. Also we've got brand new carpets. The front and back there. Seats have all been redone. I've got to get new door cards, um, so the door cards will get redone. I should have got the uh, center console um, restored when I got the dash in that restored, but for some reason I didn't, I forgot or whatever, so I've got to get that bloody restored. And, uh, Got all the window winding mechanisms and, and whatever in there. I've got to put kits through all that. Um, so there's a lot of work to do. Um, you know, still a lot of work to do. So uh, I thought I'll just uh, make a YouTube video and um, put it up there. And if you guys like it, very good. Get something out of it. Um, what have we done today? We stripped it back, put the front end off. As I say, everything went back to bare metal. I didn't want to move around here, Jack. Uh, went back to bare metal. Chassis strengthening kit in there, so the uh, front end, side end, the back end. Um, I think that's about, about it. Oh, I've got a heap of photos, like these brand new guards. The, um, the other guards are sort of rusted out down the bottom, and 
that are beyond repair, so these are from rare spares. The bonnet, the rare spares bonnet. Um, front guard was rusted out down the bottom as well. Um, the one here didn't have rust, you know, the common spot for rust, it didn't have rust, but um, it had that much accident damage. All of this here has been rebuilt out of metal because that was all fiberglass and bog, it was this thick. I'll, I'll drop some photos down and I'll show you. But uh, that was disgusting. <laughs> quarter was all dented in and smashed in, it's been side swap. So um, we did buy rares, rust repair sections through here to replace it, not because it was rusty, the car was pretty good for rust, it only had a uh, few bits and pieces of rust in it. A couple of pin holes around the front and back win windows and the uh, seat belt securing, um, sorry not the seat belt, the seat, um, seat mounts, um, they were a bit rusty, uh, so we got um, some new ones off of um, local Victoria, you know, I don't know who I'm talking about, I can't really know. Um, this is all new, because that was rust there down the bottom, spare wheel carrier. So that's all sort of been rebuilt. Um, not the original, not the original boot, uh, boot lid. Um, got rear-ended when I was driving, leaving the wife out and out. And uh, someone smashed in the back, and it wasn't too bad, but you know, it was enough to send the boot and the beaver, and this rear section has all been replaced. And that's what basically started the, the rebuild. Like I wasn't, uh, I was just saving a bit of money to get bits and pieces, some money together to do a few bits and pieces. But, but um, once, once that was sort of smashed in, we sort of took it off the road and he said, well, we, the car was white when I bought it, but by uh, compliance plate, it's supposed to be this color platinum metallic, which I really like this color. So pretty stoked that it's, um, that it's this color. So, uh, that sort of got the ball rolling with the um, with the rebuild get, get, get started. So um, originally I was just going to go back to uh, original. It had when I bought it, it was licensed and running, and I had a um, 308 in it with a um, Trimatic in it. Um, it. wasn't the original gearbox. The original pedals are still in there for a manual, so it was originally probably an Aussie four speed, I would imagine. Um, so it had a manual gearbox, you know, originally, but they put Trimatic in there. When I did a date um, check on the uh, on the motor, uh, it was a um, 1970 model, 308 motor, not a not a 69. So I'm, I'm thinking that it wasn't the original motor. Um, it wasn't the original pilot because it had a heap of hull damage on the roof, um, and they would have just replaced the bonnet instead of repairing the hull damage in the bonnet. So um, my panel beater, he um, had to fix and pull all the dents out of there because that was bogged up. So there was a lot of work went into that. Um, so uh, that's all, all smooth now. So this door wasn't the original door, it had been side swiped as well. On this side as well, there's quite a lot of accident damage right the way through, but good for us, so you can't win. But anyway, um, the door was maroon on the inside, so not the original door. So when I was going to go, um, when I was um, planning on doing it and, and going back to um, original, when I worked out it wasn't the original bonnet, it wasn't the original door, it wasn't the original boot, the interior wasn't the original interior, it was um, supposed to be Goya red, but I'm staying with the black, um, my seats are all black. Um, the uh, motor wasn't the original motor or gearbox or whatever, and that's how I got to where I am today, and I just thought, bugger it, I'm just gonna build what I wanna build, um, which is a tuppy. Just thought I'd, um, Give you a little update on, uh, I forgot to tell you about the motor really, so I thought I'd um, give you some uh, information on the motor, if you're interested. I uh, did tell you it was um, 421, we've uh, built to 600 horsepower, but um, just the gutter, it's got a, um, it's a dark block, been struck out. It's, uh, it's got, um, oh, there's the dog, shush. It's got a um, scat crank, Kelly's um, uh, rods, uh, CP bullet pistons, Brodix Dragon Slayer head, uh, with solid roller cam. So I'm um, really looking forward to getting that 
happening, get it, get it running and get it driving, especially with that um, manual Trimic gearbox behind it, it should be a bit of fun I think. So um, yeah, just, just thought I'd uh, give it that update. It's the um, Quick Fuel 850 and it's got uh, the MST um, ignition in it, that's over here, so it's a bit dark. And turn the light on. So um, yeah, MSD six digital six AL ignition, and uh, this bloody thing, blaster SS MSD coil. That's going to go under the dash. This is going to go in the um, in the glove box, and uh, that's pretty much tough mounts. Um, when we built this. You can see it's got that massive base uh, sump under there. I don't know if you can see that, if that's turned out very good. Big race sump. This um, steering link goes through the centre of it. And with that big race sump, there was just massive clearance issues under here. So what we did is we scalloped that down a bit. We've trimmed all this up, cut that, dropped it down, rewelded it back in. Come up with a Mickey Mouse. So for all intents and purposes you wouldn't you wouldn't even know that that's been done. Which is good. This here, that's for the um Clutch, uh, clutch line to go down to the for the hydraulic clutch actuator. Um, it's retrofitted. Uh, Mel Woods retrofitted a um, slave cylinder right at the bottom of the clutch pedal, and uh, and then that's um, it's got a, a um, reservoir under the dash under the, the kit that will go up under the dash. Got one of those wiper relocation kits off offline. These couple of holes here, that'll be the main power um, coming in. Uh, I can't remember what the other one was, but I'll work it out. I've got some notes of it or whatever. But sort of did all that before it was painted so that by the time it's painted, we'd have to root around trying to, trying to hide stuff. I've got the original steering box being painted up. Had to draw the line with um had to draw the line with the bloody whether I was gonna put an independent front suspension in. My mate's got one and he put he put one in his car, it's a beautiful bit of kit bit of kit, but um but Tim Green paid for it. And I won't, I won't be racing around in oven, so um it's more just to to look good and get wet in. More just to look good, so um I didn't worry about that. I'm not gonna worry about it with the IFS front end, even though they look really cool. But uh, the bonnet hinges, I think they're the Aeroflow ones. Um, it's actually fiberglass. I think I told you about the bullet skirt being fiberglass, but it's all been boxed in and, and whatever. But um, did a really good job of that, the panel guy. So uh, one of the other jobs I've got to do is um, got to get these, these are the, the, the bumpers, front and back bumper and I'm going to pull them off, wipe them down because they've got a thin smear of oil on them to so stop them rusting, wipe them down and then we've got some POR15 and a little tin to paint the, the back of them just to um, seal them up a bit because they're not chromed on the on the bloody uh, on the inside. We've got lots of new rubbers and stuff, new seals and that we've got to put together there. All the new bloody clips and badges and all that sort of stuff to go on. We've got top to the doors. They gotta get reupholstered. I'm keeping the drum brakes on the back because um, with the shortened diff with the uh, calipers or can um, the uh, the calipers can uh, foul on the chassis rail, the shortened diffs, so I'll just keep the, uh, 
keep the, uh, the old drum brakes on the new car cover. Pretty good actually, it's a good fit. Stitched up covers. Got a, um, what do we call it? Sandblasting box to clean up stuff. New, um, new spray gun, so we'll be able to paint the petrol tank and things like that. Still got lots of bits and pieces, so new ball joints, I've got to do all that. This, these, um, these are actually quite new, they're not that old. I've been mean, sitting around for a bit, but the shockies for the back. This is the mass cylinder that I had. I've got fitted. All sorts of shit. So yeah, just need to get into it. Store these things, clean them up, clean them up. Had a few different sets. They all seem to pick, as everybody knows. But um, I'll tidy them up. Get them as good as I can. One thing I forgot to show you is um, these things. They're not cal tracks, but they're the basically the same sort of thing. So I've got them out there. We'll get them powder coated. Get these welded, welded up, and um, so I've got sort of some Caltrax here, they're pretty good, nice and solid. Look forward to getting that done. As I say, uh, look forward to seeing how it goes with the, with the um, Tremec TKO 600 gearbox. I think they handle six or 800 foot pounds of torque or something, so the motor puts out 550 foot pounds of torque. Um, four nine inch with the um, probably going to run three nines. I might run three sevens in the, in the back end. I'll just do a bit of research. We haven't looked at a few um, uh, 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 what do you call it? calculators on that calculate your uh, uh, ratios and that when you're running. So it's on the cam when it's um, when you cruise around. So that that Tremec gearbox so it drops into fifth gear and it's a um, 0.64 final drive in in um, in fifth gear. So um, I think at about 100 kilometers an hour with the 15 inch wheels uh, and three nines, it should be about 2,200 revs. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, pretty good. Um, so I'll drop you some photos um, after this and during it, um, just of the, the work that was required to get it to where we are now. And my idea is just to um, just to film as I'm doing stuff and uh, hopefully you guys get some interest out of it.
we'll uh, probably tell you, I'll probably, I've um, been working a lot lately, so um, probably only be able to put a new episode on every three or four weeks or something like that, we'll get some stuff done initially anyway, and then later on I'll um, hopefully ramp that up a bit and get a bit of work done. So uh, if you like what you're seeing, hit, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next episode. Thanks very much.